Saturday. If you're living in the south of England, you can wake up to a blue sky, warm day. However, here in the northwest, it's breezy, it's chilly, and it's overcast. And the forecast for later is rain and thunder. So, you lucky people in the south, enjoy your sunny day. So what are we doing today? Well, we're going to start removing the paint of this um, cast iron clock. Now I've ordered some gold leaf and we're going to gild it like it was originally. We won't be doing that today. Um, oh, the stuff hasn't arrived yet. We only ordered it last night. And two, it'll have to have the black paint done for the gilding. Right, this is one. This is the tool of choice, the old needle gun. of removing the hands because I think it's going to be better if we can take them off because we can do them front and back then and there's a little rub screw there which isn't seized so I'll undo that and that one should slide off the first one is off that came off lovely and easy so try and get this uh, our hand off and uh, then we can restore them The 
this in the 10th 08. So that must have been the last time these were off. Excellent. Anyway, getting those off, it now means that we can grease the, uh, the bearing and everything that's on there. As well as get the, uh, the hand stripped properly. And it means that I can actually take them off side to the workshop and gild them there rather than trying to gild them in the wind, which would be a lot easier. I still have to gild the rest of it there. Uh, up here. Right, we shall leave you there for a minute. We're getting there, quite a lot done. It's coming up paint treat. And I'm going to have a break now, because I've been at this for hours. So, people of St. Anne's, apologise if I woke you bright and early this morning, making noise here on the uh, church bell tower. I've started the restoration of the clock. I've got two of these to do. Taking it right back to its original cast iron. So it's a full restoration. I'm taking the hands off, I'll take those uh, to my workshop, strip them, and they'll be gilded with gold leaf. The letters, possibly, or numbers, should I say, not letters. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We might do them with gold leaf as well. It just depends. I mean, it's, it's not exactly the easiest thing to do when it's windy. Uh, gilding so we'll see right so now you know what the noise is and uh, what I'm doing up here but they'll look splendid when I've restored them And a very good morning, it's now Monday. Over the weekend, unfortunately, I heard the sad news that uh, our uh, friend and colleague, Dave the Bricklayer, sadly passed away last Wednesday. He'd been ill uh, for a couple of months. We'll not go into details. Um, and he sadly passed away. Um, bit of a shock, really. But there you go, um, one minute you're there. The next you're not. Right, so what are we on with today? Well, we're back on the church and we're going to be doing some more pointing with lime, of course. It's very, very windy out there today. 
So it's going to be extremely unpleasant up on that scaffolding, I would imagine. We put a fleece on today, try and keep the cold out because it's not very warm. It's only going to be about 19 today. So anyway, apologies if any of the videos are windy sounding, which is quite possible. Right, let's get to it. We shall see you shortly. This is inside the church. We're just going to uh, turn the roof alarms off so we can start. Very peaceful in here this morning. Beautiful old Victorian church. Well, the very first job this morning was get the paint stripper off the uh, clock hands. So I didn't want to leave it on too long with it being copper. Well, there you go, they've come up. Lovely. It's all the paint gone now. And they're ready for polishing and then gilding with gold leaf. They will look splendid when they go back on that clock. Right, let's get up on that scaffolding in this wind and do a bit. Right, well, we're up at the, uh, the top this morning and we're doing a bit more of the line pointing. So we run you through last week the rules and their pause on the line pointing. So, nice big thing on your trail. Keeping it flush to your bricks. A lot of these bricks have lost the, uh, the Harris off them, which is the little square edge, so to speak. But that's okay, we can get round that. Nice deep one there, plenty in it. Make sure it's filled to the, uh, the very back of the joint. And of course, getting into this industry and doing um, masonry conservation, etc., isn't as straightforward as you might think. Obviously, you've got to learn what products to use and how to use them and, and all that kind of stuff. Also, you've got to be passionate about it. You know, it's uh, it's no good if you're all about the the dollar at the end of the week. You know, how much can I make a week? got to have that passion because these these buildings you know they, they belong to everybody and it's important to keep them maintained but maintained correctly and that takes time well you, you do charge more than the uh, the average builder for free pointing of course you do you know the materials are more expensive and there's there's more work involved you know you haven't cut in everything and so on you know it takes longer because you've got all the cherishing to do and look after it for a week and all that kind of stuff but, uh, it's a great industry to be in you know and it's not just pointing you know you could be Working on some stone and restoring it, changing bricks and replacing them. Indeed, you could be doing like we were doing on Saturday, <coughs> restoring a lovely stained clock. The hands are all lovely and clean now with paint. And of course, I should be gilding them. And I'll fill part of that process in there. Let you have a look at that. 
anybody out there that's got a church or something like that and they a bit of the iron work restoring or a weathercock or something like that, give us a shout. Who's happy to have a look at it for you? Or even if you've got a bit of the old uh, masonry that needs attention, you know, we can look at that for you too. We are uh, registered craftsmen with the Diocese of Blackburn. So you are well safe in our hands. Again, swapping your trowel sizes to suit the joint. You don't want to overfill it and you don't want to underfill it. side of the building it's fine here it's not too hot it's not drying the gear out too quick and the air's quite moist which is good too so pretty much perfect weather for what I'm going to to that. It's a bit soft so we'll get that out while we're up here and replace it.
all falling out down there as well. Bit of stuff off the plate below there. Look at this uh, carved stone here. It's sandstone. Quite a bit of erosion on it now, of course. You know, it's uh, a fair old age. But you think of the, the Victorian craftsmen that uh, possibly down below sat there with the benches carving this stone out all the way back in 1873. And then it was all carted up here, piece by piece, and set into place where it's remained ever since. I mean, it's done well, it survived two world wars, lots and lots and lots of storms, and zillions of gallons of rain hitting it over the years. It's had a couple of pieces re replaced, which you can see, but uh, it's still fairly very well for its age and it's part of the louver system for the bell tower it's all boarded up on the inside looks like it was done many years ago probably an attempt to keep birds out of there right so next we've got another panel here with bits of patching to do let's crack on and a very good afternoon. So what is it we're doing this afternoon? Well, we're going to trim out some of these bits here and give them a wash, give them a good soaking and then we're going to repoint it. Here we go. grinding I hear you say well it's a grade two and you're not really allowed to put grinders on it so nice thin plug and chisel sat there on his cloud now thinking well I'm not missing that he preferred the grinder Chris with us today, he's doing a, another little job for somebody else today. He only comes in now and again. 
He's actually doing a university course in cyber security. He decided he didn't like this industry anymore, which is fair enough. job in the world. Of course, a lot of the time when you're doing this sort of work, you're doing it for people who aren't so much in the know, but they run buildings, shall we say, you know, like churches, country houses, etc. They don't really know how to repair and maintain these buildings. They've got a rough idea, but they don't know exactly how to do it. So you become a bit of a consultant sometimes and try and run them through what should be used and how it should be done and it was pretty much the same with this one um, they basically wanted uh, NHL 3.5 because that's what had been used in the past but it was the wrong material it shouldn't have been used um, I mean fortunately the diocese's architect backed me up with this um, but the ones that, that run the day to day sort of running of the church so to speak they got it wrong and they thought they were right so yeah, you've got to be a bit of a consultant and teach them the uh, wrongs and rights of how it should be done. Leaf. pretty soon the um, gold leaf will arrive or gilding the hands um, so I'm deciding what I'm going to do with them is I'm going to take them home actually rather than the workshop and um, Lady Stella is going to have a go on one as well uh, she's never done it before so this shall be interesting 
Well, there you go, that's a little bit in. I think that's about it for today though. It's all been done with the churning brush now. As you can see there, just got to put cherishing sheets on now and give it a bit of a spray. But uh, I've done all right today, got about five or six meters in. So uh, cracking on, cracking on. Yeah, I've done a bit of the stone as well. We weren't down for that, but you know, I'm up here and it's got holes in it, so point it. That's what it takes. Right, so we shall see you tomorrow being Tuesday. <laughs>
lovely little uh, spiral staircase. It's, uh, it's like walking up a tube, it's very narrow. Nice round bricks. I couldn't film it unfortunately because uh, as daft as it sounds, it is so hard to get up and down those stairs without falling. It's uh, quite steep and not really a handrail, it's just a bit of rope to grab hold of. So yeah, we didn't film it unfortunately. But I did get some photographs of the workings of the clock which, uh, which I'll put on the video as you've probably already seen. Right, well I'm just having a, a brew for five minutes because uh, we're pointing again today. One thing that I've noticed is, if you can see there, but the, the ridge on the church roof is out of line, probably be about 12 inches. Now whether that's because it's been extended at some point, uh, at the very end there, or something has moved. But inside it's huge trusses, big timber trusses. Um, so I can't see it being something moving. All I can think is that it's, uh, it's been like an extension that's been added on at some later date. I shall look into that and find out for you. Right, well, we'll cut you off there. I'll finish my tea and then crack on with the pointing. Now here's the thing, you see this edge? It's all eroded away. Now that is caused by this, which is a really hard cement mortar. What's happening is the water's coming down and it's been basically taking the edge of the stone because the stone is much, much softer and the cement and eventually it'll wear a great big hole in that probably start wearing that brick away and then you just have this big lump of cement based mortar sat there on its own that's how hard it is it's ridiculously hard and it shouldn't be in a building like this but it's probably done in maybe the 1970s or the 1980s um, when they didn't really think about what damage it will do um, as I've mentioned earlier in the video so there you go that's what's gone on there and it's just eating that stone away you know you, you can see the rest of it I mean that, that piece at the end there that's actually been replaced but this shouldn't be eroding away the way it is right crack on time and that's all the cement removed now can you see how the joints are cut square you know they're not a taper or anything like that they're nice and square and that's that's how you really want them to be nice and deep about 25 mil 25 to 30 mil and you're going to get bits that are quite deep just through natural erosion so you just push it straight to the back with a thin trowel and just keep building it up and up and up so you make sure that the uh, the perp itself is full from the back of the brick to the front of the brick. Super. Well, the weather's taking a turn for the worst. As you can see, it's uh, lashing it down. It's not going on this bit of wall yet, so might might be able to get a bit more done. But. Uh, it's awful out there. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it's really coming down that rain. I'm already wet, I've only been out two minutes. I'm having my lunch and I'm soaked. The joys of working outdoors. For all you people that think you lucky bugger you working outdoors in this lovely weather, bear in mind we also work outdoors in weather like this. Cold and wet with horrible bits of grit in between your fingers and not pleasant at all right i'm going to crack on and try and do a bit more and beat this red catch you in a bit well the weather's taking a turn for the worst as you can see it's uh, lashing it down it's not going on this bit of wall yet so might might be able to get a bit more done but uh, it's awful out there. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it's really coming down that rain. 
already wet, I've only been out two minutes. I'm having my lunch and I'm soaked. The joys of working outdoors. For all you people that think you lucky bugger you working outdoors in this lovely weather, bear in mind we also work outdoors in weather like this. Cold and wet with horrible bits of grit in between your fingers and not pleasant at all. Right, I'm going to crack on and try and do a bit more and beat this red. Catch you in a bit. Right boys and girls, that brings us to the end of this week's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And yes, I know we've only gone till Thursday, but it's just going to be more of the same for the rest of this week. And of course, I don't want to bore you too much with it. You're supposed to enjoy it, not be bored. Well, if you have enjoyed it, as usual, give us that big thumbs up. It helps us with the logarithms, as you well know. Also, if you subscribed recently, thank you so much. If you fancy subscribing, it is free. There's no requirements. We don't want credit card details or anything like that. You just hit that subscribe button. And that's it. You're a subscriber. You're part of the gang. Well, we'll see you next time for another episode of Messing About with an Old Church.